This video is sponsored by Skillshare. We all have it. The desire to be fancy, opulent, to leave our wife and kids in order to pursue a life of piracy. Okay, so maybe not so much that last one, but I certainly have expensive tastes, and they've resurfaced in a big way thanks to Steed Bonnet's immaculate wardrobe on a cute little HBO show called Our Flag Means Death. And as if my desire to drop everything in favor of making fancy clothes wasn't strong enough, this week Nicole Rudolph fans the flames by uploading a video about dressing the gentleman pirate, in which Nicole makes a luxurious 18th century wrapping gown. Did I uproot my original video idea in favor of this project. Yes. I have no excuses besides my magpie brain just seeing something shiny and saying, ooh, I need that in my wardrobe right now. So today, my friends, we are going to be pursuing fanciness and clean hems. That is provided I can actually find fabric for this project. So let's see what I can find at the thrift store. Hello, we are at the thrift store looking for Steed Bonnet-esque wrapping coat fabrics. I really don't think I'm gonna find anything just because finding an 18th century looking silk type thing at the thrift store is not very realistic, but you best believe I'm gonna have a look anyways. I cannot believe it, but I actually found something and I'm pretty excited because it's like, it's so extra. It is so steep. Obviously this isn't gonna be like a cosplay. I don't have an accurate shirt or anything and I certainly don't have breeches. Wow, or stockings or period accurate shoes, but I'm at least gonna have a dressing gown like my boy Steed. Hello. I hope you guys are all ready to become fancy boys because it is time for some luxury. So I have my fancy boy fabrics here. I still can't believe I found these because they're kind of perfect and they also look really good with my hair. So like I'm very excited to just sit around in the mornings and drink coffee while wearing this for absolutely no reason whatsoever. I am going to try to do this in one day this week. I think it's realistic. If I can't do this in a day, then I'm going to just be really disappointed in myself because it is literally just big rectangles. I can sew rectangles, I think. So here is the order of the day. First of all, patterning. The patterning for this is going to be based off the little diagram that Nicole Rudolph put in her video. It looks pretty simple. It's just a matter of taking measurements and then it's just gonna be cutting and pinning and sewing. So today is just about having fun and becoming a more elevated, fancier version of myself. We're moving on to a new era here. That era being repurposed curtains. Regardless of the fact that I feel pretty confident that I can do this in a day, I'm still a little nervous, so I'm not going to procrastinate any more than I already have. I've already been watching so much YouTube this morning, but now I'm gonna try to be efficient and actually get to work patterning. Measuring myself was pretty simple, even though I had to do it alone. I just needed the measurement of wrist to wrist, and then my chest measurement with a comfortable amount of extra space, and then the distance from the back of my neck to my ankle. Although I did end up taking a few more measurements later just to get a better fit. Here are some of the lengths that I go to to try to make my videos somewhat aesthetically pleasing. We have a new plant that my friend gave me, another plant that I got at the thrift store, random books, candles, and then I also got this light recently, which I absolutely love. It's one of these lights. So I'm hoping this will help my videos to look less drop ceiling basement and more Tarzan? I don't know. I decided to pattern directly on my outer layer fabric since it's what I had. So before I could do that, I had to do some seam ripping to remove the lining, which means I have some more fabric I can use for something else. Yay. So when it came to patterning, I didn't really follow Nicole's instructions, but what did you expect? It's me. I basically began by dividing my chest measurement into a quarter to get the width for half the back panel and then widened that at the bottom to get more of a flared shape. Then I just mirrored that to get the other half of the back panel. I knew the front panel would need to be a bit narrower since it needed a neck hole, so I basically used the same pattern piece, but marked the length from my shoulder to my neck as the width and then tapered it the same way I did the front panel. So much for everything just being rectangles, but I wanted this to be really swooshy, so I don't care. I will make things harder for myself for 
the aesthetic. The sleeves were basically right angle trapezoids to get that wide flared cuff, and instead of doing wrist to wrist, I took their measurements from the edge of my shoulder to my wrist. And here is some uncomfortable cutting footage of me cutting with the world's dullest scissors. I tried sharpening them, it didn't work, and they still suck. Eventually, I did change to some office scissors, which worked way better and sped up the process like tenfold. <laughs> Things are going pretty well so far. I think I might have actually chosen a realistic one day build project for once, which means that would also be a pretty good, like simple, but still substantial feeling project for a beginner. I get a lot of comments from total beginners who really want to get into costuming, but they don't really know where to start. So if that's you, allow me to recommend Bernadette Banner's class, Hand Sewing Basics, Work Wonders with Fabric, Needle, and Thread, which is available through this video sponsor, Skillshare. Getting into costuming isn't the most accessible thing since it usually means investing in a sewing machine. But learning to hand sew efficiently is a great alternative method for getting into costuming, especially if you're interested in historically inspired projects. I learned to hand sew whenever I was younger and it allowed me to dip my feet into costuming before I could afford a sewing machine. And now Bernadette's class is helping me to polish those skills. In this class, Bernadette teaches all the basics of hand stitching from materials, threading, and starting and stopping stitches to fundamental stitch styles, buttons, and buttonholes. This class has all the knowledge you need to begin hand sewing full garments or just mending wear and tear on your current pieces, which is a great skill to have, especially if you're concerned with sustainability. But if you want to explore other interests, as a massive online learning community, Skillshare's catalog includes classes on countless other topics, like painting, video editing, sculpting, and even cooking. Their platform is also ad-free, so you're never interrupted when trying to keep up with Bernadette's felling stitches. New premium classes are launched each week at varying skill levels, so there is always something new to learn. And their entire catalog is available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. So if there's a skill that you've wanted to learn for ages, but you haven't known quite how to get into it, Skillshare is a great place to start because the first 1,000 people to use my link in the description or my code will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring my endeavors to become a very, very fancy 18th century person. Now, let's get back to it. So I have cut all the pieces a good bit bigger than I probably should have just because I didn't want like the flowy drapiness of this garment to be lost. But there's an issue with that because then you have problems moving your arms around. This is something Nicole explained whenever she was patterning this piece in her video. I was just like, oh, I don't want to cut it too small. So I cut it bigger and of course it ended up being a lot bigger. So I might need to cut down the two back panel pieces and absolutely this front panel piece. I think the sleeves are okay. The biggest concern here is I don't want to waste fabric. Again, I probably should have patterned it to be more rectangular especially down below but like I want it to be flowy and magnificent and I have a tendency to always just do too much all the time so that's my bad once I get these steps done I think we'll be moving a lot faster it's just I've been trying to be careful with how I do this especially whenever I'm patterning directly onto the main fabric I'm using because I don't want to waste fabric and I already made a mistake where I accidentally cut out two right side back panels whenever I was trying to mirror it so I'm using that as a front panel so it's fine but this requires too many of my brain cells so I'm moving a little slowly here just so that I don't totally screw up. So far, so good. It actually ended up working out better than I thought. I just needed to alter the front panel a little bit more. And the sleeve is a little bit long, but I think whenever I hem it, that will fix that problem. Also overall, it's a little bit long because I'm a short gangly little creature. But that's fine. Once again, once I hem it, it should end up being a more reasonable length. Also cool thing, the way I did the front panel here, there was a natural fold in the curtain where I seam ripped it. And the hem that I seam ripped just kind of perfectly folds in here naturally and folds down. So whenever I install the lining, I think that will end up looking pretty much perfect. We are making progress. Montage. Everything is finally all cut out. Wow. 
took me long enough. So next is just going to be basting the lining layer together and then basting the outer layer together so that I can sew those together. I don't think this is going to take me too long, but those are my famous last words, so bear with me here. We'll, we'll see what happens. So like I said, the next step was sewing together the individual pieces of the outer and lining layers. I began by pinning the two back panels and quickly stitched them together, and then I did the same for the back panel of the lining. And when I was finished with that, I quickly pressed my seams and began pinning and sewing the sleeves. When I had those together, I pinned the two front panels to the lining, which was tedious, confusing, and made me impatient. So I sped through the rest of these hidden stitches with reckless abandon until it was time to pin and attach the sleeves, which is also tedious, but requires too many of my brain cells to speed through quickly. But next, I carefully stitched those up because sleeves are the bane of my existence. And with that, the layers were coming together quite nicely. Okay, so this is where we are. I have the lining pretty much sewn together. At first, I wasn't sure if I I was going to do a lining for the sleeves because I actually ran out of my lining fabric, which sucked, but I did end up using it for the main pieces. But I ended up actually just using the same base fabric as the lining for the sleeves, which is a little janky just because it's a little thicker than I would have wanted for a project like this, but it does look pretty nice and it's all I could find. So I did end up adding a lining to the sleeves, especially since the transition between the lining and the sleeves not having a sleeve lining would have been really strange if I didn't. I think making that look clean would have been more effort if I didn't add one. So laziness was one of my motivations with adding one there. It seems like I have pretty good progress right now, but I feel like I actually do have a decent amount left. I have to attach the sleeves to the main outer layer, and then I have to attach the lining to the outer layer, and then do all the hemming and the finishing. So we are probably only about halfway through right now, and it is almost 8 p.m., so <laughs> I'm really slow. But to be fair, I didn't start until noon today, so this is about eight hours worth of work and I am slow at patterning. It actually doesn't take me that long to sew and assemble pieces. It's mainly just cutting everything out and like ironing and all that stuff. She says she had to be a so now I'm just going to go and attach the outer layer pieces and then continue on from there. So I also have a bit of a situation with the back panel being too wide. Like I overestimated the size of my back and it's just not quite staying on my shoulders. So the other thing I'm going to do is basically go in, just take up the excess fabric like this, baste a line down the center, and then just cut it all, press the seam like I did there, and take out the excess. That way, I think that's gonna be the easiest way to do it. I'll take out the same amount between the outer and lining layers, and that should fix that little problem just right. That is really my only big problem at this point. Otherwise, I think the fit is pretty good. So even though my patterning job was not the best, it actually will probably turn out fine because this is not a fitted garment. It just needs to stay on my shoulders. So. I I got to work doing that, but before I got very far, my sewing machine jammed because I bent my needle. So that was cool. Thankfully, I found some spare so I could keep going. But like I said, next I focused on attaching all the pieces of the outer layer, quite impatiently, if I may say, because I really wanted food at this point. And after that, I fixed the back by sewing over the excess fabric on both the outer and inner layers, and then cut off the excess and pressed those seams. Okay. I have finished assembling both of the individual layers. Here is the progress so far. Honestly, on camera, it looks beautiful. I'm so excited for it to actually be done and like be hemmed correctly. So the final steps are just to basically assemble everything and then do all the hems, which admittedly is still a fair amount of work. It is currently 10 p.m. I'm so efficient. So next, before I do that, I'm going to take a quick dinner break. Tonight is sort of a cheat meal ramen night, so I am very excited for that. And while I eat, I'm going to watch the Tristan Dunst Marie Antoinette. I've been making my way through a list of like period films and TV shows, and this is on my list. I also watched Tried and Prejudice, the one with Keira Knightley, and I didn't love it. So I hope that I like some of the other films on my list better, because I just, I didn't love that one. I'll get around to watching the mini series of Pride and Prejudice just eventually. I've heard people generally like it better. Don't get me wrong, the filmmaking was beautiful. But I've heard a lot about this film. I know that Sofia Coppola makes very interesting films and I really like Kirsten Dunst, so I'm looking forward to it and hopefully this will give me the willpower I need to work into the wee hours of the morning and actually finish this up. That and coffee and ramen, so.
some already wonderful song choices in this film. Also, if you've been wondering where the executive producer has been this whole video, she's been outside like all day. She normally comes and hangs out with me whenever I sew things, but uh, I just let her inside, so release the crap. Fair. So after my dinner break, I transitioned to finishings and began by pinning and sewing the sleeve hems. I've been trying to get cleaner finishings lately, so I tried to go slowly to get a nice consistent edge on all of these pieces. And patience is not a strong virtue of mine, so I hope you're proud of me. So next I sewed the top of the front panel to the shoulders, pinned the center, then sewed that in the sides of the collar as well. Finally, I pinned and finished the sides of the front panels to get a nice crispy edge. And I also trimmed off some of the excess messiness on the bottom of the gown prior to hemming. We are Almost done. All we have to do now is hem this. The producer is keeping me accountable and making sure I don't fall asleep whenever I'm supposed to be finishing this. Hello. It is an ungodly hour, so I'm not even gonna tell you guys how late it is, but I just finished. We did it, we made it, she's done. I'm actually really happy with how it came out, so I'm excited that I made something in a day that's actually pretty good. But enough of that, you guys are gonna see what the final result looks like right now in the reveal. It is so hot out here, so I'm going to keep this brief. I'm very excited that I finished this in a day. It was a really fun project to tackle just on a cozy Saturday. Sit down, watch some movies, do some sewing. I am very, very pleased with it. The only things that I'm not the biggest fans of are some of the mess inside the collar, which, you know what? I'm not gonna show you. And then the hem on the bottom is not my cleanest work, but I can go back and fix that. So overall, a win. I got it done in a day, and I really like how it came out. Now, I just have to figure out where I'm going going to wear it because I live in a Satan's armpit levels hot state. I don't know if it's going to be making any serious appearances this summer. I honestly think I'm just going to use it as a fancy bathrobe until some more comfortable fall weather comes and then I can just wear it out to the Walmart as I do. But thank you guys all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know if you want me to do more one day build projects. They're a lot more digestible for me, which is why I keep trying to do them. So leave recommendations in the comments if you have anything that you think I would enjoy making that you would like to see me make. And if you would like to support me, you can like, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications. When you do so, I write you dramatic 18th century love letters, and you will never see those. But that is it for this week. Hopefully, I will see you guys again in the very near future. But now, if you'll excuse me, I am very busy. I have to go and dump an entire bucket of ice water on my head.